a wonderful morning to everyone out there in internet land. Thank you so much for joining me here once again on the Free Melon Society. My name is Eli Martyr. And today what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about free radicals and antioxidants. You hear the terms getting thrown around in articles and I just want to clarify exactly what those mean so that we know what the health community is talking about exactly when we say free radicals, oxidation, and antioxidants. So hopefully we're going to clear all of that up today and as I usually do in a very easy to understand way. So stay tuned and let's begin. So let's start with free radicals, okay? So we understand and we know from the scientific and medical literature that the presence of what we call free radicals in the body cause all sorts of uh, metabolic physiological disturbances and turbulences, okay? We know that a proportional increase in the amount of free radicals in the body also increases the likelihood of all sorts of age-related, and I put that in quotations, age-related disorders and diseases and conditions, okay? Cancers, arthritis, Parkinson's disease, Lou Gehrig's disease, skin troubles, liver spots, you hear this very often, uh, age spots on the, on the hands, on the body, retinal deterioration and ocular deterioration, bad breath, bad joints, erosion of the synovial uh, fluids in the discs in the back, okay, all of these can be attributed to the presence or the increase in free radicals in the body, okay? So, the first thing that we know, excess free radicals are not a good thing. So at this point, we should define what a free radical is. A free radical is a molecule or an atom that has lost one of its electrons and is now in an unbalanced state where it's hungry to reclaim that lost electron. A free radical is a clingy, needy boyfriend or girlfriend who has separated from their significant other and is now eagerly uh, seeking for someone to fill the gap because they feel unbalanced. If I'm trying to do a handstand and someone comes and smacks one of my arms away and I start falling, the person who comes and smacks my arm away, that jackass is a free radical. <laughs> okay, so. That's what a free radical is. Now, as we know, atoms are one of the tiniest elements of matter that go up to creating the physical world. So you have atoms and then you have many atoms that make up a molecule. Now, in every atom, there is a nucleus. That atom has an electron shell around it, a shell, kind of like an energy field, just like your body has an energy field, okay, an etheric and astral energy field. The atom also has an energy field. It's based on electricity. And its energy field, its outer shell, has a negative charge, the charge of electrons. or Those negative charges, if the atom is stable, balance the positive charges on the interior of the atom, okay? So it's when something a toxin or an environmental stressor or whatnot plucks one of those electrons away from the outer shell of the atom. The atom becomes very unstable. It's a, uh, and it really, really desperately wants to attach to something else and, and steal that, uh, uh, that electron from some other element in the body. Okay. Free radicals are naturally produced in the body. They are a natural byproduct of all of the metabolic processes that create and sustain life. So we need to generate free radicals in our body if we are to live. The problem arises when there is an excess of free radicals that are generated by the body, compounded by toxins that we put into the body that create more free radicals, okay? So it's only in the excess of free radicals that the body can't manage very well that the problems start to arise. Now, in order for us to uh, have any sort of metabolic activity, we require oxygen. So we breathe in the air, we take in the oxygen, that oxygen powers and fuels uh, all of the different types of metabolic processes that allow us to live. Oxygen is a good thing, of course. However, oxygen can be extremely destructive as well. It's a bit of a a bit of a contradiction. I mean, no different than uh, fire, okay? Fire, you, fire can destroy an entire forest. It can kill thousands of people, animals, 
and well, vegetation and whatnot. But con in a controlled way, fire can also keep you alive, keep you warm. Fire can light your way in the darkness, you know, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so you understand. So that leads us to our next little definition, which is oxidation. Okay, now we know what free radicals are. Free radicals are molecules or atoms that have lost a charge in their outer shell and thus they become unstable. Ugh, I need my electron and they, they, rah, they ravenously go and seek out other elements, other molecules, other atoms in the body in order to steal those electrons from those elements. It's the process of stealing electrons from otherwise stable molecules that you call oxidation. So the free radical is the element itself that is unstable, and it's what the free radical does that is called oxidation, okay? Typically, typically speaking, most of the free radicals that are found in the body are oxygen atoms. And so we call conventionally what free radicals do oxidation, because oxygen is, the, is one of the more destructive elements when it's unbalanced and when it's unstable. So you have the free radical, which is the actual unbalanced atom or molecule, and, and that unbalanced molecule or atom oxidizes different things in the body. Now, as you can imagine, this might set up a chain reaction whereby if there are a lot of free radicals uh, produced in the body, and they keep stealing or oxidizing other elements and other molecules and other atoms in the body, then you create more and more and more and more unstable cells, unstable molecules and atoms in the body. And when these molecules and cells are unstable, the function becomes faulty. And you start getting this oxidative damage throughout the entire system. So, of course, we probably want to know, okay, well, that's all fine and dandy. Well, how do you avoid free radicals? What causes free radicals in the body? And it's basically just a laundry list of everything that's normal in culture. Excess stress, excess worry, bad sleep, alcohol, stimulants like coffee and salt and sugar, processed, processed sugar, okay? Radiation, jamming friggin earbuds in your ear all all day how we don't know yet that putting wireless radiation right beside your ear uh, is bad i don't know how people have missed that but yeah um <laughs> I'm, I'm going on a little bit of a tangent here but um get rid of your earbuds go back to the wired headphones do not use earbuds okay do not use wireless earphones you are damaging your brain when you do this. Try not to hold a cell phone to your ear. Hold it away from yourself. Use it on speakerphone. Don't have a cell phone on your person, on your body. Keep it away from you. Anyway, sorry. Uh, just I, I guess I felt like I had to mention that. A poor diet. A poor diet will cause free radical damage. Eating food that is highly processed and highly cooked will cause free radical damage. Bad, unhealthy water laden with inorganic minerals will cause free radical damage. Earlier I mentioned that free radical production was a natural byproduct of human life. Exercise produces free radicals. This is one of the reasons why excess of exercise cannot be a good thing because you create too many free radicals, more free radicals than your body is really willing to deal with. So exercising too much all the time, this is also not a good thing. Particularly if the type of exercise you're doing is excess cardiovascular, um, excess cardiovascular work. You, you definitely do not want to be overburdening yourself with excess cardiovascular activity all the time. You want to, you want to be, um, just nice and balanced, you know, Ex exercise all the time. I do it, but it's definitely, I'm definitely not killing myself. I'm definitely not breaking myself down every single day. No, 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 no. Now there's many different kinds of free radicals. I don't really love getting into like the nitty gritty because it's just, it's just important to know the, un and understand the basics. Okay. Uh, toxins, toxins in the body create free radicals. The more you can eliminate toxins and be free of them, the healthier you are, the more well nourished the system, the less free radical damage or oxidative damage you'll have, and the less age-related diseases you're likely to experience. The more you just ignore dietary culture, just ignore it, pretend you're Adam or Eve, and eat only what Adam and Eve would have access to, you do that, you can completely eschew potential damages that come from oxidation.
in, in terms of diet, okay, in terms of diet alone. Uh, the most abundant type of free radical that you're going to find is what you'd call a superoxide free radical. And the superoxide free radical is your, your basic oxygen, unbalanced oxygen atom. Just like you have oxidation of an apple left on the counter or whatnot, starts to go bad, starts to rot. Same type of thing. So too much oxygen, uh, unbalanced oxygen free radical in your system will oxidize tissues and cause damage to the cells over time. So people complain as they get older that their joints are all achy and whatnot. Yeah, it's because of this superoxide free radical that's just kind of damaging these, these joint tissues as they, as they grow older. But it's not because they're growing older. It's because they're just destroying themselves with bad lifestyle choices. Lifestyle choices that they don't realize are bad, that the health community tells them are good. And so, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's how it works. There's peroxide free radicals that you find in fats. So when fats are going rancid or are damaged because of heat, you get these peroxide free radicals that can do loads of damage. All the damage to the skin you can attribute to these peroxide free radicals. So you have like uh, eczema, psoriasis, uh, the age spots that I was mentioning earlier. Your heart can get damaged. Your liver can get damaged. And this is why it's really important that you do not use oils as a cooking medium. Obviously, you know, everyone wants to go for a treat here or there. Or you want to, you know... I, I get that. That's that's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about what I mean is your daily practice, your regular daily practice, typical lifestyle behavior that you adhere to most of the time when you're just left to your own devices. Okay, in in that state, oils and cooked oils should not be part of your life. Okay, that's only a one-off thing when you can't help it or you want to experiment or whatever. Cooked oils are 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 free radical orgies. Okay. Oil is, is so easily damaged by heat. And when it is easily damaged, it is oxidized. And if it's left alone for a little, a little while, it can go rancid very quickly. So let's say you buy cooked nuts, for example. I should say roasted. Okay. If you buy roasted walnuts or roasted almonds or whatever, and then you, you put them in the pantry and you leave them there. Well, if they're roasted, um, just because they're nuts doesn't mean they're going to keep. They're going to go bad really fast. And in, in fact, the chances that they're already rancid when you buy them in the roasted state are almost guaranteed. <laughs> it's almost 100% the chance that they're already rancid. So you do not ever want to be subjecting fats and oils to heat because you're going to be skyrocketing the amount of free radicals that you put into your body. You've also got hydroxyl free radicals, and these are the kind of free radicals that are generated from uh, radiation. Wi-Fi, those ear, AirPod, Air, Air, Wi-Fi, those ear, AirPod, Air, Air, whatever, I don't care, I'm, I'm, I'm old school. Just get rid of this, this crap. Okay, and in the final little part of this, we wanna talk about antioxidants, right? Because we talk free radical damage, which is oxidation. And the antithesis to that, okay, the, the, the cure to these free radicals is antioxidants, okay? Because free radicals are oxidizing. And by oxidizing, they are stealing electrons, okay? Stealing electrons from other molecules and atoms, which make them subsequently unstable. So this chain reaction of instability amongst all of your cells and tissues, the answer to that is the presence of antioxidants, which prevent the oxidation of the tissues. What antioxidants do in the body is they neutralize the free radicals in the first place. Okay, so they neutralize the free radicals by balancing their outer shell, by either donating an electron to them, or they also stop the chain event of free radical damage by doing a similar thing. How do you get antioxidants in the body? Well, again, this boils down to recognizing what your body is designed to do and eating of living foods only or exclusively or as much as possible. Because in the living foods, you find the presence of enzymes 
you find the presence of the vitamins and the minerals in their unadulterated, unheated state. And those are your antioxidants. So vitamins A, vitamin C, vitamin E. You have minerals like selenium, chromium, and coenzyme Q10. A whole host of minerals, you know, copper, zinc, all, all of them. Enzymes, proteins. Okay, proteins are the things that do work in the body. And it's these enzymes, living enzymes, that you find in living organic food. Living organic food that has not been adulterated and corrupted and destroyed or denatured. Proteins that are denatured by heat and processing. This is why it is so important that you recognize the damage that is done to the body when you eat cooked foods. Anytime a food is heated above 115 degrees Fahrenheit and sustained for X amount of time, and now it doesn't take very long, what happens when we, and we cook food, if we're cooking food, let's be honest, we're, we're exceeding 115 degrees Fahrenheit by a long shot, okay? So I'm just saying that's all it takes. So when we cook food, we, we, all the enzymes, okay, enzymes are gone. Virtually all the enzymes become, uh, are, are dead. Okay, you lose all enzymatic function in cooked food. And you also destroy most, most of all the vitamins in food. Okay, so most of the vitamins are, are gone, which are antioxidants. All of the enzymes are gone in food that is cooked which are antioxidants. The minerals in food, in cooked food, when you have organic minerals, so let's say I've got a bowl of lettuce, a bowl of lettuce that is chock full of minerals. If I cook that lettuce, then the minerals revert to, coagulate and revert to their inorganic state. So if you remember from my video on salt, you'll remember that it's the job of planet Earth to change inorganic minerals found in the soil and and transmute them and work them in a fashion chelate them and and wrap them in a in a protein organic shell to create an organic form of that mineral for the animals to eat it's it's only the organic form of mineral that is usable by life forms animals humans when you cook food you change the minerals into their back into their inorganic form thus making them completely unusable by your body. So when the nutritionist tells you that you need to go and eat mineral-rich food by eating things that you would just typically cook, like beans and broccoli and grains and cauliflower and all the really dense vegetables that no one would ever consider eating raw, it's, it's misleading because, yeah, you might be able to pinpoint minerals if you looked at it with a high-power microscope, but those minerals are inorganic once they're cooked and thus are not usable by your body. And minerals, again, are antioxidants. So all of these antioxidants that I've just mentioned, which are d destroyed by heat and processing, okay, would lead you to consider that you probably should eat more of the raw food variety rather than the cooked, okay? Some vitamins and some minerals work very well together. Uh, in order to create a superb antioxidant effect. Um, vitamin A and selenium, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you, you feel free to check me out on that, um, but off the top of my head. Vitamin A and selenium, for example, uh, work really well together to uh, create an anti-cancer effect. And, and there's a whole there's a whole host of them. Again, it, it's not really important to, to know these because, you know, you can't really observe these in your in your own practice at home. Uh, all you're responsible for doing is recognizing what your body is meant to do, what it's designed to take in, and just do that, okay? The reason why the deer out in the forest doesn't worry about free radical damage and what, because it only worries about what its body can do, what its biological restrictions and limitations are, and it honors those by eating grass all day and never has to worry. But... Just for curiosity's sake, many of these vitamins and minerals um, work together, some in a very special arrangement, in a special marriage, to create particularly potent antioxidant effects. Okay? That's it. Okay, guys, that's it for now. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that really helped you. If you like this video, then make sure to subscribe down below to the Free Melon Society. Make sure you don't miss any videos that I put out. And give this video a like. Give me a comment if you have anything that you'd like to say. Let me know if you'd like to have any subjects 
covered in the future that I've not covered before. Other than that, you guys have a really great day. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time here on the Free Melon Society. Mwah, 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 mwah.